All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for dialing in. I think that this is such an amazing um, time for this call as we are not only in the new year with new goals and new resolutions and new focuses, but also with the rapid reset. But I had been in touch with Kisa after hearing um, Adrian McGovern on Jessica Rigner's team do an amazing, amazing call a few weeks ago, basically that she was calling the comeback to her. And um, Adrian is a six star with the company, but after her dad battled cancer and she went through some life changes, she kind of took a hiatus from her business. And while she had residual income and it paid her over and over and over, she knew her business could not only be in a bigger place, but um, it had fallen because she had taken her foot off the gas. And she went through all of these different steps of kind of what she did and refocusing on her why and kind of launched this idea of the comeback to her. And my favorite line that I heard her say is, if I've done it once, I can do it again. You know, I know how to do it. I'd been executive. I had rank advanced. I had rank advanced other people. And it's really just about kind of having your head in the game. And Kisa is not only a top earner on our team and in the company, but is a close enough friend of mine that I have just um, been able to see her benefit from residual income over and over and over, but also kind of battle um, things that happen in life and changes that make being an entrepreneur somewhat challenging. And she's laser focused and motivated. And I know coming back stronger than ever before. And I said, I'd love for you to just kind of share a little bit about what that journey has been like and how um, what it's kind of taken to get back on track and what are the things you're going to do because for everyone to be successful, they've got to know the how. So I'm excited to learn from you tonight. I'm going to mute and just let you take it away, mamas. All right. Thanks, Lauren. Oh, hi guys. Happy Tuesday. I was like, what day is it? It's Taco Tuesday. Of course. Um, thanks so much for getting on. Uh, when Lauren asked if I would do this call, um, I told her that I would, but knowing that if I did, I would be fully transparent because I think that that's really important. Um, there's a saying in isogenics that you know the glory, but you don't always know the story. And I think that's really true for so many leaders in isogenics. And I think that every single person on this call is a leader. If you have enrolled someone, you are a leader. So you don't just need to think of leaders as a top earner or someone based on, you know, what their rank advancement is. But oftentimes you do see someone's rank or title or you see them being tagged in top leader posts and cycle posts on Facebook and you see their success, but you don't really see their struggle. And I really think that the dark parts of people's stories are what makes them the most exceptional and um, the most interesting. And it also is what makes us resilient. So that's actually what I told myself over and over again over the last few years when I was going through some really hard times. So that being said, I plan on being really transparent um, for the most part and honest about my story because in order for me to get to the next level in my life and in the next level of my business, I really had to get honest with myself. So I know that there are a lot of team members on this call that might not know me very well. So um, I'll just give you guys like a brief overview of who I am and kind of my background within Isogenics and a little bit before that. But um, I joined Isogenics in May of 2014 and I initially just joined as a product user, but Lauren did talk to me about the business when I enrolled. Um, my daughter is currently 15 and I was a single mom most of her life um, and she was 11 at the time that I enrolled. Uh, before Isogenics, I had done a lot of different things. Um, I don't have a college degree, so I never really landed on like a career, but I had done a lot of different things within the restaurant industry. Um, I was in real estate and then before Isogenics, I was in insurance and I was in insurance because I wasn't successful at real estate. So when people come into this business and they say, like, I'm not a salesperson, I clearly was not a salesperson because <laughs> I was not successful in real estate. So you don't have to be in sales uh, or an amazing salesperson to be successful in isogenics. Uh, but when I started isogenics, I was really unfulfilled as far as my financial income and just my passion. It was not in the insurance industry. I was just doing that because it was paying the bills, um, paycheck to paycheck, but it was paying the bills. Uh, I was just still unfulfilled. I had no time freedom as a single mom. So when isogenics opportunity was introduced to me, I really thought like what if this could be the thing that I had been looking for for this entire time and so 
knowing that feeling that I had, I really took that gut feeling and ran with it and decided that I was going to see what, how far I could go if this was what I thought it was. So I ended up enrolling a close friend of mine, Andriana, and um, she had this great product experience too. And it really kind of her network and me together, we started running together. And I always laugh because I still, Lauren had been in isogenics for not too long, but I still felt like it was like blind leading the blind. Like we had no idea what we were doing. We were just so excited. So we just ran and um, I, I look back on that time and I, I feel like it was just, we were helping so many people that I felt that it was truly a movement. It was something really special that, and really valuable to me because it was something I had never been involved in something like that before. So it just, I'm sure many of you on the call, if you've been in isogenics a short period of time or a long period of time, you probably do feel that it's something that's special. And that was just a feeling that I really ran with. Um, and the next two years after that uh, were really incredible, but not without you know some wall kicking moments. Um, I had someone in my business hit Crystal Executive before me um, that was on a two PET of mine, and and that was difficult for me, but I. I persevere and I kept going and pretty soon I uh, had hit three star and I was a start 1000 and that happened in March of 2016. Um, I then the next month hosted my first super Saturday that Lauren actually came out for actually it was in May of 2016 and at the time I felt like this was like a fast moving train like I, it was just going to keep going um, or so I thought. And this is kind of where I'm going to get transparent with you guys, because this is where things started to be strugglesome for me. And I think it's important to share this part of the story, which is not something that I've talked about um, before. So the August following um, that May, so a few months later, something happened that was really like a foundation cracking moment for me. Um, and like I said, I've not talked about this on social media. Um, only a handful of people know about it, but I thought that I could not talk true, truthfully about my journey within isogenics um, without talking about this because it really like knocked me off my axis um, and I feel like changed the trajectory of my business. So I'm going to say it candidly because I don't want to get emotional about it and it's the only way I can really talk about it. But um, in August of 2016, I was sexually assaulted. And that really began, was the beginning of a two year investigation and discovery battle. Um, and because of that, I fell into a really dark depression, which most people, if they were watching me on social media, would not be able to tell at the time. Um, but I am sharing it because I know that everyone has had battles and traumas that they fight in private. And I can only speak for myself, but this was one that really affected every area of my life, especially my business. Um, because for me, if I wasn't able to get out of bed some days, how could I fake being inspirational or motivational to someone else? So I really became stuck. But I also know like, life has to go on. And within those two years, I got in a serious relationship. Um, a lot of amazing things actually happened in those two years. My dad became an isobody finalist. I became engaged to a man that has two young children. Um, we've ended up blending families about a year ago. And so, you know, a lot of things happened within that period of time that I was struggling with all of those things. But so my life now looks a lot different when it did than it did when I first started isogenics and it's evolved a lot. And that's something that I'm going to talk about as we get into the call also is evolving, especially for those of you who have been with isogenics for several years. Um, so now that you know that, <laughs> you might understand a little bit more about why Lauren asked me to do this call. Um, and I also listened to Adrienne McGovern's call in December, and it really was the things that she said really helped bring me back to life a little bit. And so I hope, and my hope right now is that I can just pay that forward on this call to whoever needs it tonight. Um, I really found it helpful to take notes when Adrienne was doing her call. 
minutes uh, because I got off the call and I sat down and really took heed of the things that she said and applied those into my life. So if you guys have a pen and paper handy, I would um, encourage you to grab it. Um, and then I just have to wipe my nose so I'm not upset anymore. <laughs> okay, number one. Um, is to recognize what it is that went wrong in your business or just in general. Find out what is holding you back and write it down and make a list. So something that I know about myself is I'd rather not do something at all uh, than do it halfway or not up to my standards and not accomplish it, if that makes sense. So. Like I'd rather just not try and instead of trying and then failing. Um, so that's something that I recognized that I really needed to work on was what was holding me back was just that fear of failure. Um, so you guys may experience something similar, but either way, I think that it's important to recognize and spend some time thinking about what it is that went wrong and write it down, make a list so that you can look back on that and just kind of pinpoint those things. Um, this is also a really good time for you to be transparent and take like, like David Wood says, radical responsibility of the things that you can change moving forward. Um, number two is figure out what your goals are now and what is realistic based on the now. So like I mentioned, when I first came into Isogenics, um, I was a single mom, even though I was working full time, as that evolved, I had a lot more time freedom once I quit my full time job. My life now is a lot different. And so I have to be more aware of what's going on in the now. And so that's something I want to encourage you to do. I also, being transparent, I am on paper a three-star executive, which means that I cycled 40 times in one week to hit that three-star recognition rank. Um, currently, so realistically, the next goal that I have would be to be a four star, which is 60 cycles. But the reality for me right now is that I'm cycling roughly 10 to 15 times a week. And so 60 would be like this giant crazy jump that's probably not going to happen without a lot of work. So I had to sit down and really write down those small goals that I had in order to get me back to the lofty goal that I see for myself, which is four star and then obviously continuing on from that. So really looking at where you're at currently and figuring out, okay, my goals may have changed, but these are where they are now, and this is what's realistic for me now. Uh, number, th oh, uh, the other thing I wanna mention is have dates. So when I was first starting in Isogenics, Lauren used to always tell me to write like dates that I wanted to rank advance or any goals that I had, write them on sticky notes and put a date on it. Because a goal with a date gives you a timeline Otherwise, it's just a goal for whenever. If you have a date, it's really going to be more of a focus for you. So I can't encourage you guys enough to get back you know, to doing that. And that's actually something I'm going to take my own advice on and start writing sticky notes again because I feel like those were really beneficial in the past. Um, number three is reevaluate your expectations for yourself. So what is possible for you now? What does your schedule look like now? What are your priorities now? What are the things that, hold, that are holding you back now? You know, not what are your goals from one, two, or four years ago, but right now. Because I feel like life can change in an instant. Whether it, you know, a six months ago, like celebration seems like it was a month ago. And so, but so much has changed. And so really being able to sit down and reevaluate, okay, what, what are the expectations that I can set for myself? What are my priorities? Um, and make sure that you are aware of what those are and the expectation of yourself. Number four is be willing to evolve and tweak your approach while also being mindful of what you worked on in the beginning. So for those of us that started in isogenics, you know, a year or more ago, um, 
realize that things are constantly changing. They're constantly changing within network marketing. They're constantly changing on social media, the platforms, the algorithms, the updates. I mean, even within Isogenics, we're constantly changing and evolving. And that requires you to spend time learning the tools and learning things in a new way, you know, that you may, and a lot of us may not love learning new things on social media or may not love change, but that's, you know, part of this business. And that's just something that will, you have to learn to teach yourself. Um, things like that might be getting back to basics. I know that Lauren posted a post earlier today in Dreamers in Action that had a list of things um, that I think are really beneficial and helpful. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, go back and look at that in Dreamers in Action because she just did that uh, like maybe six hours ago. And I think that that's really beneficial. Um, trainings and calls, corporates doing weekly trainings, our teams doing weekly trainings. There's other teams in Isogenics doing weekly trainings um, and also using the tool. So isogenicsbusiness.com is an amazing resource and they've evolved that so much where they literally have things bulleted for you. If you're having trouble growing your business, that's the first place that you should go because it is you know, just basically a list of all the steps to follow that will help you get like re-engaged or started again, or just continue on with where you're at right now. Um, getting yourself to an event. There's so many local events. Um, there's Zoom events all the time that can just help you learn. There's corporate events. Um, if you go to isogenicsevents.com, most people will post, obviously the corporate events are there, but then there's also events for people that are doing like local events, like Super Saturdays or sip and samples. And just going to those in your local area, learning, like meeting other people and hearing what they have to say or how they speak about things like the products and the compensation plan will really help you to become, it'll build your belief and it'll help you become better at explaining it to other people. Um, the other thing I think is really important is to get an accountability partner. You know, we talk about accountability partners a lot when we start on products, but then we don't talk about it again when we get as much into the business. So if you're someone that's even struggling with the products or you like fell off track product wise, grab an accountability partner. I know that there's so many people that aren't feeling like they are doing their best um, with the products and they are looking to have an accountability partner. You can post in the Facebook group, ask for an accountability partner. I'm sure there are tons of people that would love to link arms or get on a, a group text with you and just help you, whether it be for products or business. Um, Number five is figure out what makes you happy and what doesn't make you happy. So if you know that putting, and I'm sure a lot of you can relate to this, you know that putting together flyers and social media slides drives you insane and it takes you five hours, don't do it. Don't try to spend your time learning how to do that. There's tons of content within uh, Isogenics, within our group, ask someone for help. I'm sure that, you know, me or Lauren, someone's got about a million flyers or slides that you guys can use. I always laugh to, about the saying, but it's so true is like work smarter, not harder, like figure out. I don't like to steal other people's content per se, but there are certain ways you can work around that and utilize other content so that you're not spending hours and hours of time taken away from income producing activities to do these things. Um, or, you know, if you are someone that knows like answering messages or having your phone notifications going off constantly when you are with kids trying to make dinner, trying to do homework, turn them off, turn off the notifications. You are in charge of your business and treat yourself with respect, respect yourself like you would respect a boss, have business hours. That's something that I had to learn how to do when my life and schedule evolved was set business hours and respect myself because I was going crazy. Um, number six, and there's only eight you guys. So number six, make sure that your messages 
whether it be posts, text, voice memos, social media messages, that they are authentic. You know, it's okay to take someone else's content, like I just mentioned, and tweak it, but make sure it sounds like you, you know, the, or the person that you're messaging, like they know who you are. If you are not someone that normally calls people like babe or girl, like, hey girl, if that's not something that you normally say, do not copy something that Lauren posted in Dreamers in Action and just paste it into a message to someone because they're gonna see you right through you. Make sure that it's authentic, that it's relatable. That's gonna help you to feel like you are establishing an identity if you hadn't previously or if that's a place before that you felt stuck. You're gonna help establish an identity and a brand for yourself if, if you are authentic and people know that this is who you are and that what you're saying is real and truthful and honest. Um, number seven is be as consistent as you can. The work, Lauren always used to tell me this, and it's, it's so true, I can't say it enough, and I, I know this, but sometimes I still forget it, but the work you put in now is gonna show up three to six months a lot down the road. So keep persisting and be consistent, but that goes back to what I was saying about being realistic um, with your goals is you can't be consistent if you're not realistic because if you're going to put in two weeks at an unrealistic pace and then you're going to fall off track and stop being consistent, that's going to be a detriment to you. So, you know, and you're never gonna see the fruits of your labor. If you go two weeks, fall off. Another two weeks, fall off. You're never really gonna see anything come to fruition because there's no consistency. So, you know, being as consistent as you can, but also being realistic, like I mentioned before, um, is where you're gonna see the shift in your business. When I really, after we got back from celebration, um, I knew that this was, uh, and I think I skipped over this part. I'm sorry because I meant to mention this before but One of the things that I talk about so often when I talk about kind of getting back in action or why I love isogenics is I look back on those two years where I struggled so much and One thing was the most consistent and that was that I got paid every single Monday I got paid every single Monday from isogenics from that residual income from the work that I had put in the two years prior to that. And that would have never happened if I was in a nine to five job. I would have probably, to be honest, gotten fired had I been working for someone else. And so that is a true testament, I think, to the compensation plan that Isogenics has designed. Just that it allows you to pay residually on work that you've done prior. And so I just can't encourage you guys enough to never give up. Even if you're feeling stuck at the moment, don't give up because you will see the fruits of your labor, you know, tenfold down the road. Um, so sorry to bring that up now. I meant to say that earlier, but... Um, Lastly, I wanted to say, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, I am the first person to say that, and I don't take my own advice. I'll be 100% honest with you. Like Luke actually said to me tonight, but like, it is so hard for you. Why is it so hard for you to ask for help? Like, you're so hard on yourself. And, but we have this amazing community with an Isogenics, which is one of my absolute favorite things about Isogenics, is the community that we have and the people that I've met because of being within this company. And we are here, there's so many people here to help you if you need help, reach out to someone, whether it's private message or posting you know, in a Facebook group or posting on, in a messenger to someone. Reach out and ask for help and ask for encouragement and just let people know that like, hey, I'm struggling right now and I could really use some extra encouragement. Um, it might be hard, but I've never had support in the last, you know, five years like I've had from this team, from this company. And so I can't drill that point home enough is 
reach out and don't be so hard on yourself. So many people are experiencing hardship and they don't talk about it. Um, and so if that's you or if it's potentially you down the road, know that we are all here to help build you up and lock arms with you. And we want to see you succeed no matter what capacity that is for you. Uh, with this crystal, the rapid crystal reset that Isogenics just released, I mean, that's an, an amazing incentive, you guys. Like the crystal bonus is enough for brand new people are in, insane. But when you've been in Isogenics for a certain amount of time and you actually like grasp what kind of money that is, and then you have the opportunity to get double that, you know, I mean, it's just something I wouldn't let pass you by. So not only that, but also with the beginning of this new year, there's just never a better time to get out of your own way. I know it's easier said than done, but we have the resources, we have each other. So that's just, there's just never been a better time to lock arms um, for, you know, newbies, seasoned team members, just remember really to celebrate every single win that you get along the way and don't discount the small things. I mean, we don't discount the, when our new people lose two or three pounds on a cleanse day. So why are you discounting the, the one person that you enrolled or that you only enrolled one person today? So, and of course someone's knocking. <laughs> Isn't that, you know, just the way it goes. Um, so that being said, I am done tonight. And I thank you guys for listening to me and being on the call. Lauren, th thank you so much for having me on this call. I hope that it was of some value to you guys. I don't know if you want to open it up for questions since we're only at 630 or what your thoughts are, but I'm finished with my part of it. I'm happy to do if that wants to do it. I'm so sorry my video was off. I got a facial today. My face is bright red and I'm cleansing. And I was like, yeah, I'm just going to put the profile picture up. But I'm here the whole time and it's super awesome. And you guys, you know, Kisa, obviously, you know, with getting engaged and, you know, the trauma that happened to her, everybody has stuff. You know, we have families that have illnesses. We have people that lost a job, that moved, that got married, that had a baby, that, you know, whatever has happened. And we just give you the permission that, this business has seasons and there's seasons when you're in momentum. And like Kisa said, there's seasons that you're a part of a movement. And then there's seasons where you almost lose sight of that because of the distractions or because of the overwhelm or because of the emotions. And every single one of us goes through that. Some of us more than others or some of us at different times. But one of the things that I love that you said, you know, it's kind of the things that you learned of working on yourself throughout this journey that I truly believe would not happen in other careers. And in that process of being able to work through it and being able to grow as a leader and grow as a person, that she was continuously paid. And, you know, my sister um, could do another similar call like this and things that had happened and, you know, with her move to Mexico and our dad and her breast illness, um, breast implant illness. And um, she could do a very, very, very similar call, but we'll say wholeheartedly over and over and over again, she got paid every single week. You know, FMLA would have run out. Anushka Ganji on our team who had brain cancer, she would say she got paid over and over and over. And for any of you right now that are, you know, always watching me and saying, you know, why is Lauren working so hard? I heard Tracy O'Malley say, build your business like your life depends on it. And it really does because you just never know when something's going to happen and having the safety net and having the security that I just encourage you guys that when you're healthy, when you're happy, when you're in the flow and in momentum, build it now, be strong, be committed, because you don't know when something's going to happen to you. You don't know when something's going to happen to a family member, and this company is going to take care of you through and through. So Keith, I love your heart. I love your vulnerability. I know you inspired a ton of people on here. And the only other thing I want to add in is just because you don't have a major um, incident in your life, or you don't have a major trauma or a major change don't feel like your reasoning for taking the breaks off or your reasoning for being disconnected isn't good enough, right? Like the last thing Kisa was saying about being hard on herself, we all are our own worst critic. And sometimes, you know, when you want to, um, you know, tell someone like, Hey, you're not doing X, Y, Z. Like that person has already told themselves a thousand times, you know, like I didn't have to tell Kisa, Hey, you're not enrolling this week. She knew. And what she was telling herself was 10 times harder. And so regardless, if your um, life situations maybe don't seem as big, don't tell yourself you're not worthy of them. 
for whatever reason, if it wasn't your season or you wanted to focus on something else, but it's more of a permission that this is your business. And whenever you decide it's go time, you can do that. And I love when Travis Garza opened up the call last week and said, is it your year? For some people, it might not be. And for some people it is, but just understand truly, truly the difference of like when we need to hit the pause button, like when life is happening and you kind of got to get regrouped. Like you said, if you can't take care of yourself, you can't necessarily take care of others. And that fine line of when you are self-sabotaging because your excuses are getting in the way, you know, like every single one of us has excuses. Every single one of us have things that hold us back. But when you're healthy, when you're happy, when you're in the flow, get rid of the excuses and you can build your business so hard and so solid so that when things do happen, it's going to take care of you. And that's where I'll really give Kisa some kudos that she was humble about. But the first, you know, 6, 12, 18 months, she was a part of Isagenic. Kisa gave up Taco Tuesday to call people. You know, she held events and she hosted launch parties and she built a city and a state all on her own. You know, she's in California and I was in Colorado. And she started hosting team calls and she started hosting launch parties and she relentlessly called people. She went to people's houses and helped develop them and helped do their parties. And she worked her tail off. And as a result of that, she had a business that was going to take care of her when she needed to take a hiatus. And now that she has the gratitude for that, she can come back and take that many more people with her. But that didn't happen from a few social media posts. You know, she didn't make five hundred to a thousand dollars a week residually, even if it wasn't the six-figure income she was once working towards. Right? She didn't do that residually because she had a transformation post. She went to a event. You know, for many, many months, for a couple of years, she built solid and built consistency and worked really hard. And that's something that I want you guys just kind of think about as well. But that's it. You guys are awesome, and I'm happy to mute if anybody wants to ask questions. I answered them all. <laughs> all right, you guys, then have a great night. We'll get the recording up. Hope to see so many of you in NYKO. And for those of you not coming, definitely hop on the live. It's going to be an amazing training. 2019 is going to be a great year. And I can't wait to see all of you um, sooner than later. Bye, you guys. Good night. <laughs>